I'm not going to Pandemic, for being... man. I met all the criteria. I mean, you got the paperwork. You got a legit company. You ain't scamming. They're going to give it to you. You be clean. Hey, man. It's all about Welcome board. back to the 85 South Show. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's time to take a whole nother direction in here today, man. Let's go. Cause you know, we got a very special guest in the trap oh, with us. Got the sage burn. Yeah, man. Setting the sage with the sage. You know, you got to set the atmosphere a little bit. Mm. I feel like I'm just going to let the sage burn a little bit before I even tell them who we got in here with us today, man. Hey, go ahead. Nah, because <laughs> I, want, I want everything to just hit just right. A little bit more? All right, bet. A little bit more? Cool. Breath. Say what? All right, then. Cleanse. What'd you say? Yeah. Hey, I can't hear you, though. All right, man. Very special guest. We got to do it. Man, got one of them smart brothers in here with us, man. One of those, one of them smart oh, brothers who done figured this shit out, bro. Yeah. Talking oh, to us from the other side, man. You know? Entrepreneur. Come on. I just want to make up something. I feel like he's in touch with the information, contact, resources. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you may possess all those things. Always talking. Some good shit, man. I've seen a lot of his videos online. People been hitting the comments and telling us we needed to have this brother stop through the trap. He's doing some phenomenal things in the community, also teaching people about wealth and you know, being financially responsible. Come on. Uh, crypto markets, mm. uh, metaverses, social media, uh, mogul. The list could go on and on, man. We got nothing other than the brother 19 Keys in here. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Yeah. I tried to tell him like, at least most of the stuff that you do. Like, yeah. I mean, I do a lot of different things. I know. You understand me? Uh, I, I definitely try to guide us in the right direction, specifically for the moment. Yeah. You understand me? And making sure that uh, we're not left behind. Man, we love and appreciate that, man. Keep doing your thing, because like what you're doing is really impacting people in a real real way. See what I'm saying? No, it's a blessing. That's your here. impact. It's the sage. Some evil spirits leaving. You feel me? <laughs> I don't even know what the hell that was, but I'm it was not just even... just the phone dropping. Somebody on their phone ain't living right. It's a lot of people on the phone ain't living right. That's probably the bigger Man. issue. You understand me? Yeah. Phone oh, gotta make it hard for people to live right, boy. Everything at your disposal. I mean, I they think want that you to have everything at your fingertips that you don't need. Technology made a lot of people dumber because they no longer rely on themselves. Yep. You feel me? Like, you would imagine because we got phones and technology that we'd be more productive. You know, but you're not gonna be able to find a direct correlation between the amount of smart technology and the amount of productive statistics that you see in the world. I mean, if you give a dumb person a smartphone, they're still a dumb person. Absolutely. The you phone was smart to begin with, really. It's right. all depending on who operating it. <laughs> you That's know what I'm saying? If you take the average person that lived today and you dropped them off 100 years ago, they wouldn't have no skills to survive. You understand yeah. me? No value. So everybody thinks because you live in you know, uh, in advanced time, because we got advanced technology, don't actually make you advance. You understand me? Yeah. Like, I think about that sometimes. I play that in my head. Like, damn, you dropped me off two, three hundred years ago. What skills would I have? What could I actually invent? Like, what knowledge I got of today I can take back then and do something with? Because then I can, like, measure what my actual core value is. I wouldn't Nothing. be able to do shit. Probably a fisherman or something. <laughs> Nothing but bad shit. That's Nothing it. but bad shit. No, I mean, Selling shit. dope like a motherfucker. What's this? Call crack, baby. <laughs> you finna love this? You'll have to know how to cook it's it. Legal. It's legal. It's legal, baby. Right, right. All that cocaine <laughs> you snort making your nose hurt. You can beat the man to make it Coca-Cola. Come on, man. <laughs> Stupid. Two, three hundred years ago. Yeah, but I would, yeah. You would be. Couldn't live in the 1700s, man. He wouldn't know how to hunt. He wouldn't know. Oh, not as a black man, gather. for sure. Hell no. Oh. I'd rather go to the future than oh, the yeah. past. Yeah. Like, if you get dropped off in the wrong period of time, it's over for you. I take a gamble on that future with you, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Send me forward. Uh uh. You just drop somebody in the past, you you might end up a slave. But then you can go further go back, back to and the you past might end a up bit. in some noble society as a black person. So I, I want to yeah. go back just a little know. bit. 
I want Martin Luther and Martin Luther King to hear just one Gucci Mane mixtape. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they gonna lose all hope of the future. Uh -uh. <laughs> Martin, listen Shit. to this. It's that Will Chamber. What's up? Uh, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Uh, nah. August 7th. Uh, y'all been waiting. Y'all been saying when we coming to LA. The Magic Johnson and them used to play at the Lake Show. They don't play that on Moto, but they yeah. It ain't the Lake Show. It's the 85 South Show, though. Dig what I'm saying? Motherfucker describing to me some shit. Uh, the Impossible Burger or the, some shit. He no, like, he yeah, man, it's listen, impossible. it ain't me, but it look like me, it tastes like me, it feel like me. I said, nigga, it sound like you describing the deal, though. I don't want none of that. Hey, August 7th. Hey, your ticket's still up. good if you bought them the first time. Yeah, 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 yeah we can swap it out. That's how we do it. You know what I'm You already know what it is. Uh -huh. August 7th. Uh -huh. Inglewood, California. You know what time it is, honey. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And Dallas, we coming to see y'all on July 30th, and we turning up. Oh. Period. I ain't from Dallas, but I need Tom Boogie. Hey, yeah, I'm from Dallas. <laughs> I eat Rudy's, period. They be still eating Rudy's? I don't know, but that was on we, the well, If y'all do, we gonna try that shit while we out there, period. And we are turning I up. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Yeah. I love Dallas. I love Dallas. I feel like y'all gonna show us a good time. Yes. We gonna turn up. We gonna have a good it's time. It's so, so July 30th, we are at Echo Lounge at Music Hall. The show starts at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6. I'm telling y'all, get there on time because we have some special guests coming yes. through. It's gonna be so lit. Let it's me gonna tell y'all. So lit. We got the new merch. We gonna have these shirts on sale. Period. And if you ain't never been to a Poor Mind show, you ain't never had a good time. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all get y'all tickets. Go to www.poorminds.com and we'll see y'all July 30th. Man, give our audience a brief introduction of, of you know, who 19 Keys is. Oh, uh, man, peace to the family out there. Um, I go by 19 Keys because it represents the way that I unlock minds. You okay. understand me? But I consider myself to be a thought leader. Uh, you know, a leader amongst leaders. You know, oftentimes I'm in front of the scenes, but I'm a lot of times behind the scenes giving somebody some knowledge on how to move in the right direction. You know, whether it's celebrities, whether it's other influencers or peers that have platforms and also teaching us how to utilize our collective power. You what know? is the right direction? It depends on what context, but the right direction is always the good, to do good. You understand me? For yourself and for others. I think you can take that as a general and you place that over every action, then you can be like, all right, am I doing good to myself and I'm doing good to somebody else? This is the right direction. That's really one of the greatest ways to measure somebody's intelligence is their ability to choose the right direction. You understand me? And ability to be able to choose to be with the right people. You understand me? That's true intelligence. And that's why a lot of people have issues with family, with friends, with, you know, making the right decisions for themselves. What's my purpose? What's my direction? Where should I go? What should I do? Right. If they had that particular ability, most people, like, it's not that successful people oftentimes are the smartest in the world. They know they have a great ability to know how to choose the right direction. You know, what they should do and what they shouldn't do, who right. they should be with, who they shouldn't be with. And that puts them in the right room, setting them up in the right situations, so therefore they can win more. It's all about them wins, man. Can't be out here taking no loss. Especially because you lack intelligence with all this technology available. No, oh, that's a fact. Like, you know, you can, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, oftentimes they're avoidable, but to consistently make avoidable mistakes, that represents that you're slow. Yeah. You can't keep hitting the same wall, man. Expecting uh, different results. Especially not in today's time. Like, I feel like where we at right now, like, we can look at any point of what we want to do, whether we want to achieve wealth, whether we want power. There's a way that we can do it, but just not individually. Right. Right? So, Damn, now said the point about I gotta pay this my son phone bill. It's about collective Stupid. intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> he just me? hit me back. I, I was damn in the middle of sending it. No, that's good fatherhood right there. You're making good decisions. You feel me? So, for me, man, as I try to teach people in, you know, pour them in whatever direction, 
It's simply just getting them to choose, like for a black man, I'm gonna get you to choose to be powerful. I'm gonna get you to choose to be intelligent. I'm gonna get you to choose, you know, your higher self rather than your lower self from every decision you make. And it ain't saying you gotta be 100% perfect, you feel me? But if you can choose the right decision more times than you wrong. choose the wrong one, yeah. you're gonna find your life going in a better direction. Right. You feel me? But the average person just don't know who they are. That's probably one of the bigger issues that exist. And yeah, where did you find the knowledge to know who you are? Man, I grew up, you know, luckily I had parents that taught me I was a god at a young age, you know. My mom and my pops, they both converted into Islam and the nation of Islam when I was younger. And, you know, growing up in that particular type of paradigm, it gave me instructions on who I was. Like, I'm a god, I live in a devil's world, this is how you, what you got to deal with. Now, don't get me wrong, I lost the path a couple of different times growing up in Oakland and St. Louis. You go get into some things. But I found it again because I had a platform, you understand me? I had a, a, a basis I can always go back. So I really, I like to give a lot of credit to my parents because, you know, without that foundation, when I did get lost, I may not have had the tools to find myself again. You understand me? Because when you go in the wrong direction, when you've been told the right direction, all you got to do is go back to that foundation. Like, damn, I know I'm going the wrong way. This ain't even the way I was taught. You understand me? So picking that back up said, nah, I want to utilize my skill sets and my strength in a capacity where I want to reach my highest height, my potential. Like, right. I'm bullshitting on myself if I don't take <clears throat> myself from here to here. You understand me? Like, every man got to figure out a way to live in their edge. Yeah. Like, you can just think about, and this is an easy way to calculate whether you live in there, is like, sometimes you think to yourself, like, damn, I could be doing more. Damn, I could be at a higher position. Damn, if I actually just focus, discipline, <clears throat> organize, then I can find myself in a much better place. That's because that's yourself letting you know, like, it's way more to you than what you actually doing. You understand me? And we don't often respect men who ain't living at their highest level and their highest caliber. Thanks. You understand me? We judge them like, bro, could be doing way more, but he's bullshitting on life right now. And you can't put that in somebody. They got to figure that out for themselves. Yeah. Then they got to readjust. So like for yourself, when you know you can be hired, you can have more money, better social status, have more impact and influence, you will kick yourself because you already know you must not be living towards that vision and that goal. And so every day, either you go try to distract yourself from that voice to drown it out, or you go do something that's actually gonna make that side of yourself happy. Like, yo, all right, we committed to it. We getting there now. And so it don't matter if you take losses along the way, as long as you're going in the right direction. Yeah. It's real dope shit. Yeah. And that's all I do, loss. try to stay going in the right direction. Man. <clears throat> you know, it's so, much, it's so easy to avoid bullshit, but people choose it. It's easy for some people, it's hard for yeah, some people. Yeah, but some people, people think they're the exception. Like, oh, some people think the bullshit ain't fine them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, because you always in the environments where the bullshit yeah. at. Yeah. Environment's stronger than nature. So it's like, if I'm in the hood and I know what goes down in the hood, then most likely it's gonna happen to me. Hood shit. Hood shit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But we already know it, but we still expose ourselves to it. You feel yeah. me? Because for the most part, we just don't know how to control ourselves and change our environment. Man, the damn sage then went out, man. Now it ain't deep no more, bro. <laughs> I knew that sage once just the sage, clear out the energy, I man. knew once the sage went out, man, you gonna start bullshit. You stupid. <laughs> nah, no, man. I mean, y'all got a lot of people right here, man. You know, they say during, like, recession and hard times, people try to, like, oftentimes they start binge drinking. They uh, play games too much, you understand me? They, they start binge watching TV shows, specifically men. Like, we got a hard time dealing with our emotions and stress. So we go do everything to distract us from accountability, you understand me? And we deal with these times the worst. So I like the fact that y'all show switch it up because somebody may have just jumped on here at one time because, man, I rock with 85, they keep me going. Damn, this one time they had Ron on there. He really gave me some game that transitioned my life. Right. People tell us that type of stuff all yeah. the time, man. Yeah. That's what we do it for, really. Cause you never, yeah. that's why exactly that's we- That's the power of black media, though, for that's real. That's why yeah. we try to have a wide range of people on the show, man, just so people can, like you said, form their own opinion. Yeah. Come up with your own concepts, and, cause you never know who they are gonna hear from. But just think, before we had, like, the ability to create our own media, we had to listen and watch everything that they just gave us. Right. You understand yeah. me? No ability to project your own thought out there. Like, even I was listening to the game talk about how the fact when he was going through his contract disputes and shit, like, he didn't have a platform to go on social media and voice it and get the people on his side. 
Like mm -hmm. that didn't exist. Like our it generation came got on the that trip. It could have came to the trip. Definitely, and right. and should. And every black celebrity that's out there, and somebody that got influence, they should all come to every one of these media sites. So did you, you see that Nor up. Noriega from yeah. the Drake Champs called out that. the black celebrities for not supporting the black they media? They be on some bullshit, man. You know, once they get a part of that uh, uh, that bourgeoisie crowd, man, they start to fall in line. But they don't even understand. We plugged into the niggas. And it's more popular on this side. Hell yeah. Yeah. But like, we plugged into like, last time I counted, like 1,300 communities, mm. separate entities. Yeah. yeah. But look at it, though. So let's say I seen LeBron say he go pick basically a podcast to go on with his I hit him up and told him to come to the trap. Come on, bro. Yeah, LeBron better, he need to come. You know, I do high level conversations, so you know, we be going all over different universes and shit in our conversation to go. Different deep. universes and shit? Yeah, so I had uh, Billy Carson on. You know, we was talking about multiple dimensions. Right. You know, and ancient civilizations, a multitude of different things. I had my bro Blue Pill on. That's when we went deep in. You know, people believe in astrology and chakras and things of that nature. So right. I try to have a wide variety of different subjects and topics at the same time because, you know, we need high level conversations. Like, we don't value intelligence at all in our culture. You don't think so? No, nah, so who, give me the top five smartest people, smartest black men in the world. Top five smartest yeah, black men in the world? Top five smartest black men, fast. Shit, Tyler Perry, um, Bob Johnson. Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and that black dude that invented them super soaker water guns. See, that's my proof right there. That five. <laughs> that five that's is my proof. Yeah. We don't know who the smartest black is. It, it's, it's, them, it's, it's them two little kids. Tyler Perry, bro. <laughs> it's them two kids. Who them little kids? They had outstanding IQ. They were way smarter than them. Nah, that's probably like 30 you, now. They not even kids no more. These old people. This was a few years ago. These are old men. Them are psycho men. I see. I feel Every you. couple years, we drop them in, <laughs> and we proud of them, too. All the people that I he named find a, found a way to finesse the system. But you said smartest, though. That's you smart. I mean? You got to be smart Smartest. to figure out how they figured the shit out. So let's say you compare That's, that list they to They smart in a who area. Who's the smartest five white men? Shit, I have no idea. John Lennon, <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres. I like this list. Uh, Mike Myers. <laughs> Austin Powers. Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> who, how many left? Uh, Bill, G oh, Jeff Bezos. Johnny motherfucking Depp. Because <laughs> he beat his case. <laughs> no, nah, so in real life, though, let's say, when we talk about, like, we don't even really have a measure on what we would grade as, what makes you the smartest in the first place. I think we're just doing, like, right. yeah, that's what no, I'm, saying. I'm like, saying. Like, IQ, pure. If, 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 let's say, impact. Okay. You understand me? If you're talking white guys, then most people go look at Elon Musk. No, you fuck that. Me? Before that was Elon Musk, it was Steve Jobs. No, it was Bill Gates. Bill Gates held that yeah, for a Bill long time. Yeah, Bill Gates was first and then Steve Jobs. But but see how you got actually nine entertainers that you can go towards when you actually looking at who the smartest in their culture for real? You're not it's most, not even necessarily that they were the smartest, they just men. had the best idea. Well, what makes it the best idea? My point is, is this, that when we think about the top, we think about the most popular in our culture. We don't really think about the most intelligent. I think it's because we have to look at it from a different perspective on the being black because it's already hard as fuck, right? I think the ultimate goal was to get this paper. Fuck the accomplishments. That was the short-term goal was to get to the paper, right? What we gonna do with the money once we... Because we been so getting fucking, money, let's be honest. Who is we? Black That's people in America. Black people think that we gonna all be together. That's why we losing. No, it ain't think, no us. I think we, we, we like the idea because we know that our collective intelligence is the only way to get there. But the reality of it is, on a daily basis, we don't believe in that. If we believed in it truly, we would make it happen. That's the thing about it. We could say that about a lot of hypothetical shit. But where is, who is this we that we talking about? Like, we, we call, as black people, like all of us as a group? No, those that agree to the collective idea. 
Everybody don't agree to it. Some it people that's living what I'm in saying. suburbia right now, like, I ain't got time being Like, black. nigga, I'm good. I'm straight. Y'all worried about this black shit. We doing good over here. We get money. We don't give a fuck about that. Let's see, even another culture that don't have to consistently think about being Chinese, Jewish, right, white, or whatever, they already have it within their culture ways for them to collectively succeed. We only have ways for us to collectively fail. You understand right. me? Which is completely different. So the idea, like I always talk about creating a new culture because our current culture is with a failure culture. We don't know how to win. And we don't know how to win together. See, there's a lot of people winning in the culture. Yeah, individually, but individual wins don't mean nothing. But hell, that's how all the other groups of people that you're saying are winning. Nah. You don't never hear white people come out and say, oh, they're making white people look bad. Because or Chinese already, people say, you're making Asian people look bad. they run the world already. Well, they run the world banks, the that's world because education. They, right. They don't the let themselves be classified as a group. But it like is all a the fuck. white people that we named, right? They don't give a fuck about what other white people is doing. Because they, they have the privilege to not care because they already run the shit. Right, because they don't have to save an entire race of people. They could just do their thing and be <laughs> successful by themselves no, and they just think be like, about, have so them those, stance those be white. Those at the top do think about, like right now, they're going into a population decline. They think about maintaining that. That's why they goddamn commit terrorist acts because they don't ever want to be number two. They don't want to be the minority. They fight against that every single day as a collective. That's the reason they keep niggas down because they know if I get out your way, y'all go win. If they stop putting the pressure on you today, you win. You understand me? If, if, if we stop collectively creating all of these systems and agendas to lock, kill black men, degrade them, separate the families, we can't allow black men and women to come together. Y'all focus, there's no way to stop y'all. So you got to think about that. Naturally, we're attracted to each other, but they keep putting shit in the way to wedge us against each other. They wouldn't have done that if they know if I just left y'all alone, y'all will win. But anytime we've been left alone to our own devices, we build and fast. You understand me? So that's why they had to destroy every single black town. They destroy every single group that's created because they know if we just leave y'all alone, y'all got messiahs, y'all got generals, y'all got builders, y'all gonna win. So they make sure that they interest as a group is protected by keeping ours down and keeping us separate. That's the way it works. Like the greatest collective group would be the honorable Elijah Muhammad, accomplishment wise in America, most influential man ever in America. So if I'm a great intelligence, I'm gonna do it by influence and impact. You understand me? and your ability to create sound solutions and be effective. So we don't have too many ways where we measure like, damn, who is the most intelligent? Because when we think about problems, we put out the most popular, not the smartest person that can actually solve the problem. So therefore, we never hear the voice of the smartest one in the room, just the person that's popping the most. That's a matter of opinion, though. Everybody gonna have their own answer to that question. If we got a problem that, can, that definitely deals with engineering, I'm gonna bring an engineer and scientist. I'm not about to bring Oprah or Beyonce to talk about it. You understand me? So I don't wanna bring the most popular, I'm gonna bring the most qualified. Shit, I'm bringing Oprah and Beyonce because they're gonna bring all the top scientists out to that shit. But why not just put the top scientists and make that the person that's How we gonna forward? find them? Somebody got to be connected. They already educated. You can you go You think cold. if Oprah don't promote this shit, the top people ain't coming? When was the last time we had a scientist in the culture that was like, all right, Who I is need... we? When I say we, when we do like... That's what I'm saying. It's I like... use the word we a lot because I, I rock with black, black people. people. And so I consider black... all y'all we. It you ain't no me? we. First of all, if that's the case, we have to establish we first. Like, no, what is a we? we it's a we. Gonna get together to make a collective decision. It's a Fuck we whether or not we want it to be a we because they look at us as we a we. All, that's what I'm saying. We don't have a we. There is a we. Because the moment we come up with a we, it's still like, we ain't going to work tomorrow. It's still going to be some nigga like, shit. I don't know who the fuck we is. We not <laughs> together, but they done put us together. <laughs> nigga, ain't no we. It's we, just us. It's no, us. they be telling us, hey. Ain't what, no we yet. Okay, who they get to vote? Us. Who they get to vote? We need y'all to vote. Y'all. Yeah. See? Because they calling us we. But then, they done put the we on but us. But then once, once they let us vote, let us vote, then we find out. Hey, man, vote. Yeah. hey man, we didn't say that. Well, we also don't need everybody. 
Like, I'm not talking about all 45 million black people. I ain't trying to save everybody, just those who collectively That's the agree. only way it's going to have to happen, though. It won't happen like that. The only way it happened, like, you, when you want to go save a people, you don't go to the people, you go to the leaders of the people. You understand I me? Mean, you go to the people that got their attention and their influence, and you get them to change the direction. We don't listen to nobody. We listen to the most popular. I mean, Whoever if got the beat hard, we media. listen to the motherfuckers if it's the wrong <laughs> shit. If every black media channel decided to say, okay, every once in a while, we're going to sprinkle something about financial literacy on there. You but gonna start reprogramming the people whether they want to or not, because it's gonna be so popular, and we just go follow what's popular. We've been failed by everybody, we black and by white. Ourselves the most, because now the we black don't have no white. excuses. They ain't no excuses. Now you say we, we, <laughs> black Who people we? as a whole, <laughs> black the black community. Yeah, yeah. People with black and brown skin. People who had black mothers. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's when, I, when I say black, I ain't even really talking about skin. I'm talking about those who share the same ideas and values. You understand me? Because there's a lot of people who may share the same skin color, but don't share the same ideas on what's progress. Nobody does. Some and I feel like that's sure. what, what's keeping the whole community so stagnant. Because we don't have a collective agreement of what that vision looks like. That I agree to. Like, let's think about how long it took the Constitution? Like, it took them to lock you into a room when white men came together and they wrote a Constitution for everybody so that they can win over time. Right. You and it's never going to change. And so, if you look at a blueprint that's already successful, it means that if you implement the same thing, they're already showing you how to win. Yeah. But who's defining the success? I think statistics. When you look at impact, when we look at how many black men get locked up, what are black families generating? How many products do we own? What's our gross domestic product? What are we actually producing? You can start to, what's our education levels? You can start to look at statistics and be like, okay, they improving. You understand me? Because if we got 1.6 trillion spending power, we ain't got a problem getting money. We got a problem putting money somewhere where it's productive. We got a problem producing things because everybody else utilizes our spending power because we buying up they shit because they producing something. We not producing, we just spending. So that means that if the influence now is, yo, all right, everybody can keep talking about designing brands, but what we talk about just designing our own brands, right? Well, we making our water bottles, we working our drawers, we making our soap, we making everything that's essential products, and then we buy it from ourselves. There's no way you can't lose. You become a prosumer, you produce what you consume. You understand me? You keep it in-house. But everybody else, they market to us, because look how much money we got. We got more money than the whole continent of Africa. So that means that it's a mindset shift that happens, and that ain't gonna happen till the influence shifts, where it's like, all right, collectively, if you got 5% of people that's only influencing people in a good direction, the other 95 is the ones who pushing them over. So inside the, the culture, the we, we fighting against each other, because I'm trying to cipher attention from you, because you putting them in the wrong direction, I'm trying to get them in the right direction, but shit, now I got to fight my own brother and sister just to keep us in line. So it ain't going to happen until the dominant influence is like, all right, this is what we doing. And it ain't got to happen in no corny way. It can just be embedded in there subtly of messages, because that's how it happened to us. Somebody go sprinkle some seeds in there, everybody getting high and drunk. Now, dang, bro, I said something real. Then the next time you run to some person, Man, bro, I said the same thing. It must be a sign. You start repetitiously putting it in somebody's head, planting a seed. So it's not impossible, but we got to work as a collective intelligence. And then, like I said, it don't take everybody. It can take a group of 24, 48 people that got enough influence that can move the whole culture. Hmm. I don't know. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't, it's, too many, it's too many holes in that plan. Well, I ain't gonna get a, I ain't gonna get a full poop plan on here, but there's <laughs> <laughs> too many holes. I'm the, just saying the reality. I don't of it think is, we're gonna be able to get everybody on the same plan, Phil. But you don't need everybody. We ain't gonna be able to get the information out quick enough. Hell, I, when was the Black Power meeting? Shit, I wasn't on Facebook. I for a fact know you can find, you can find 24 or 48 people to show up. It ain't gonna be for everybody. Some people just gonna have to get influenced by the people we bring. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Plus, our culture was ran by money. So if we put our money together, we go buy people that don't want to be a part of it anyway. See, somebody going to steal the dollars. money. We done tried that shit 478 times. When we tried that? Every time somebody steal the money. But that's a fear of mine. Every time we put some money together, somebody steal the money. That Black Lives Matter, they just stole the money. Oh, that wasn't real. The they just place. stole all the money. <laughs> that wasn't real. Y'all don't want to talk place. about it. We, see, that's our problem. We don't never yeah, talk about shit. Because that was real. never a power movement. It was that some was, black folks who stole some money from some black was, folks. What was ever their end goal? I don't know. Exactly. Shit to buy that crib. So, exactly. So, Cribs. What was, everybody gave money to a cause, but they nah. never told you what they was going to do with the money. They bought a crib. <laughs> They told us they was finna get some so they was out successful. of jail and shit. They should have came out, look, we bought the crib, thanks for the money. Every time we try to do something. But they, they never said, the yo, we gonna start creating banks and schools and mental health clinics and they ain't said none of that. People assumed they was gonna do that. You really think that's People gonna help? People didn't know it was a group. Do you, I'm saying though, yeah, do you really it was think a that that's gonna help? No, nah, I, I never have thought no that black, black lives matter was gonna help at all. But education gonna always help. How? Because education allows people better options to make better decisions. No, it's not. Absolutely every time. If they, man, look at, we're talking about a system that's ran by white people. Exactly. You so already see how they treat you when you get a degree from a HBCU. You could just, you're not about yeah, to go HBCUs get no HBCUs ain't really black, job. though. Look at all these colleges that's not about to let you in. Because you, what high school did you go to? The black people? But we don't, oh, we don't even recognize that. It's skill-based, not degree-based. What you mean, so skill like, base? if I'm gonna educate, I'm not gonna educate you to get a degree. I'm gonna educate you to get a skill. Like right now, if you teach the average black man or woman coding, they gonna be able to get a job and or create their own business. They're not gonna get a job because they black. That's yes, where the system would. gonna come right back in the because place. Because it's, it's or you can create your own business. You don't need a job. But at the same time, I know for a fact what the internet did is it made it to where you person don't even have to know who you are. They can't even discriminate against you. Okay. But people ain't really caring right now. If you got the skills, they hiring. Most right. people ain't got no skills. Like the top jobs we go, the top degrees we go to, we going to African American studies and psychology. Right. The top paying degrees is engineering. So everybody that's flooding into schools ain't even getting the highest paying degrees when they get out. So they ain't got no skill sets to do nothing. So it's a bunch of educated, unskilled people that went into debt without a skill set to even pay off the debt. So that's now the family is worse off. Business. They don't represent me. Never said they did, that's bro. The, that's <laughs> you said, no, I'm just saying. It just sounds like a long list of complaints about what niggas ain't doing. These are no, just choices the, the that people made. The solution was the skills. They, they made the choice to go to school and go to yeah, want to be a social worker. <laughs> they did that goof ass shit. I don't rock with the education system. They done paid ninety thousand dollars for a degree that make forty thousand dollars a year. That's, they do shit like this. That don't mean we fucked up as black people. That's... I never said it did, but I, we just never knew how to make the right decision because oftentimes we was doing it because that's all we knew. That's what the family told us. That's what's gonna make the family proud. Somebody got us living through them. You feel me? So therefore, we thought that was the right decision to put us in place. By the time right. we get the wisdom and figure it out, shit, we already in debt. That's it. But that's the game, though. You have to look at this whole scheme of what America is from the inside out. And once you get to a certain level, it ain't about, it ain't even about colors no more. It's about money. So once you figure out one system, now you got a whole nother set of problems to figure out. Absolutely. So that's why I say if you use the money, you can buy what you want in America. Pretty much, but we you never, still... We ain't never really if, tried to buy our even way Even if you do freedom. use the money to buy what you want in America, where you gonna take it? You go globally and in America. Like, I still want to... Like, America's still ours. Like, we've been here forever. You know what I'm saying? Like... America don't belong to nobody no more. This is what I'm saying. In the future, in the metaverse, don't nobody own shit. No, nah, nobody ever owns shit. Like, it's owned by all just corporate rent when it comes shit. to America. Exactly. Yeah, you know I mean, those who own it, you got to go to UK and you got to go to the Pope on America. See, that's what I'm saying. That's what's going on it. right now. They starting to show you who really run this shit. Yeah, I mean, it's been that way for, you know, a few hundred years or a thousand years or so. But look at the way that they can just instantly cut but, some shit but off. But at the same time, that shit was created by some frail white boys with an idea. And that's so who still got I'm it. I'm just the type of person that will never believe that my mind can't generate or there's not going to be a generation that generates an idea that rules the world. Because they was the same folks that got together with an idea, implemented it, and now they run the world. So for me to believe that means that I've just effectively, they became God and I'm their slave. You understand me? Like, 
there's a there's something in the black man that won't even allow him to consistently believe that I've been conquered forever. You understand me? That's the thing that they try to consistently suppress. You understand me? That belief in self, because like I said, black man focus, he gonna do anything. When I'm focused on my solutions, how to get us together, I start figuring out the whole machinations, how they did it, how the system work, how to create my own. You understand me? And eventually, while they fighting all the wars, we gonna find the cracks and build our own. Right. But it has to consistently be tooted into the minds like, nah, this shit ain't over. See, that's the thing about it. You said that black men are gods and kings, right? When have any gods and kings ever thought to join up? If everybody's a god and a king, it's just gonna be a bunch of gods and kings. You get what I'm saying? Like, these are individual a, uh, You have a nation of gods on earth like the, the 85s. <laughs> oh. That the, the idea is that you have people under the same guise, you understand me, collectively believing in the same thing for a collective vision. You but that's me? the thing about it. But they God don't, have, don't mean there that is I no got collective you, vision. So that's the goal: is to create a collective vision that everybody adhere to. It ain't gonna happen, cause like you said, you a god, you a god, you a god, you a god. So if we all different gods, we gonna move godly, right? But it ain't never gonna be like, okay, that us as gods, gonna... we agree to this. We won't use our powers on each other. It, it'll never happen. Yeah, it can. Why not? If That's we just got the way because that you got to qualify mean, not being in, not a in, God. Not in, not in nature? Not in, uh, what you call it? Not, not in the Christian Bible, man. Right. Yeah, no, but as we already got the same enemy, we really got the same goal. We just don't sit at the same table. But we don't, though. Because, listen. And not everybody. See, you focus on people who don't have the same goal. No, I'm I'm it saying, might be like, for me. Your goal I'm might be to reach. Make an army. Your goal That's might be to reach the people. His goal might be to become a trillionaire. So y'all gonna, your morals and your principles about how you gonna go about this shit gonna be totally different. Yeah, if you build in with people who don't have the same mission, vision, and values. Okay. If you build in with people who got the same mission, the same vision, and the same values, y'all going in the same direction. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So it's black people, the black community as a whole, right? We can all collectively agree that it's fucked up, right? But when it's time to sit down and figure out why it's fucked up, everybody got a thousand ideas of why it's fucked up. Like, there's gonna be some people who say, well, we need ed education. Some people are gonna get up and say, nigga, we need some money. Some people are gonna get up and say, fuck that, give us our land and we wanna go back to work in the field like we used to and grow our own shit. Like, so <laughs> then. Hey, it's Clayton English. You ever wanted something really good but you didn't feel like leaving the house? Check out DoorDash. You can get snacks, drinks, and household essentials delivered right to your door in 30 minutes. DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now and right to your door. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with contactless delivery drop-off setting. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code 85SOUTH2022. That's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code 85SOUTH2022. Don't forget, that's code 85 south 2022 for 25% of your first order with DoorDash, subject to change terms apply. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, what's up? How well would you take care of your car if you had to keep the same one for your entire life? That's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them the same way? How we care for our minds affects how we experience life, so it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. There are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language or taking power naps. There's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash 85south. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash 85south. You separate people. Say that. Those who agree, <laughs> y'all go over there. Those who rocking with this, y'all stay. We go build. It's super simple. That's really the best model. 
You understand me? Everybody, they vote. Okay, 10% of the people said they ain't rocking with it. Another 15%, they said they want to go do something else. Another 50% fell off. We come down to it, we got 19% left. We rocking with those. We gonna build with whoever want to go. Yeah. You understand me? Like, I think the idea of trying to build with people, like I said, ain't got the same mission, vision, and values as where you lose. Right. That's why I don't need everybody. I just need those who are ready to go. It's always gonna be some soldiers, it's always gonna be some suckers. You gonna build with the soldiers and lead the suckers. That's how it's gotta be. Yeah. But see, we've been so confused for so long, man. Y'all got some water? Hell yeah. Yeah, what's on that though? You think we didn't give you no water? Oh, that ain't water. Oh no. It's all shit. kind of shit in here, just falling out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I'm not debating you, I'm just being objective. I don't mind it, man. I need yeah. a little objective opinion. You know, we sometime. talk shit like this at the barbershop and shit like that. Well, if the niggas came from the earth, then why ain't no moon? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What is the moon? The moon is white. At night, though, they won't even let us have night. They had to throw a white moon up there in the black sky of the night. Stupid. Right? <laughs> Wrong. No, nah, I'm just fucking around. Just making sure you're welcome to the trap, bro. Oh, man, I appreciate it. Hell yeah. Gotta keep you on your toes, man. Oh, yeah, I stay on the hose. <laughs> <laughs> so what else we got going on, man? I yeah. seen you on the Marvel show, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. watching. Yeah. Yeah, make some noise for Yeah, shout out Hawkeye, man. Yeah. He a movie yeah. star, bro. Yeah. Nah, we working on it, you know. What you got in the worst Marathon. Man? Two things coming. It's a little kids movie I think I shot a while ago. I don't know. You know, I don't never know when stuff drops. So yeah. I do I it and try to forget acting, about man. it. Come on, man. You it's should do there. it. Yeah. You should do yeah. it. I want to play like a black man with the ability to just change anybody's mind. And I can read minds and stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That shit will scare you, though. Yeah, so I start just figuring out ways to change the whole world. I start going big. Well, at first, I stay low. I stay private. Nobody know about it. You understand me? I'm in my hood, and I'm just running things. What's the first thing you'll do to change the world? First thing, I, it depends on what part of the world I want to change, because that's very No, it's the world as a whole. But the world is just a collective of ideas and people and shit. Like, what about the world I want to change? Our economic, I want the black people to get money. So. And you talking about in my movie sense or in real life? What if you did if that you shit, do it. right? Yeah, if you know what I'm saying? Like, it. you was like, I want all the black people in the world to get some money. And then you look around and don't shit change, and then you're like, why ain't shit different? You're like, niggas had money the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we been had money. I think we just don't have uh, self-knowledge and education. You understand me? So Some people chose the money over that shit. Yeah, and that's why they did dumb shit with the money, because they ain't had no knowledge for it. So if, like, first thing, it'll have to be educating us to a higher degree. Every, if, if, if right now, if all black people got reparations, we're going to soon lose it and give it back to them folks, because we don't know what to do with the money. You understand me? Because so we're going to buy a bunch of thing. shit. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We're going to buy up everything. We go, yeah, because all we know how to do is spend. We don't know how to produce. That wouldn't necessarily be the wrong thing, though. You got to hurry up and spend it before they change their mind. Nah. Because they'll fuck around and give us the yeah. reparation money, right? All niggas be straight. Yeah. Everywhere we go, they only accepting Bitcoin. They don't even fuck with cash no more. So By the time we all get our money then. shit, they're going to be the moved on to some other shit. We only so, take Buffalo nickels now, pal. We, we go and buy land. We go and do, uh, make connections with other countries. You feel me? Like, Africans need black people right now. You we slide shit over Africa and we make hell yeah, they found all that gold. But Crazy. shit, for the most part, like I said, they don't be knowing what to do with the money. You understand me? They got resources, but oftentimes they don't even know how to take advantage of the resources in their own backyard. So that's why they always had the Chinese, always had white folks coming in there, you understand me, pulling their resources, giving them pennies on a dollar, and then shipping it off to make billions. So like if you take the intelligentsia of the black community, those who are educated, and go over to Africa and make deals with the different countries, different presidents. You can go build over there. It's right right now. You understand me? Jack Dorsey, he building over there. A bunch of people uh, building in Africa because they know, number one, African population about the, about the double. 
right? They got the youngest population over there. They got all of them tech geniuses. And we not really looking at Africa as a source for the future. You feel me? But if we did, that's where all of the new, I feel like the trillionaires and the next billion wave of billionaires gonna be created in Africa. And it's hella land to build on. Like, it's just, we don't have that in our imagination. Like, I really believe in being able to give us certain thoughts and certain ideas and certain visions. And everybody ain't gonna do it, but it's gonna be a small percentage of us that really take that and run with it. You understand me? And if you can impart that wisdom on a few, then you change the world. Not right now, but over time. Because sometimes we want shit done in such a short amount of time that you never gonna see those results. But the fucked up part is we gonna actually get to see the world change in our lifetime. Shit, I seen it change a couple times. Yeah. This ain't the world I grew up in when I was just young. Mm -mm. Right. Everything changed. Hell yeah. All the men yeah. want to be women, all the women want to be men. Not That's all of them, I don't. Not yeah. all, but Atlanta got a lot. You feel me? So for me, I didn't see the dynamics change. Even principles in the streets, everything done changed up. Yeah. You feel me? Technology done changed the world. We ain't have what we got now, today, back then. Like, the world has changed so drastically, and sometimes we don't even look around to see how much has changed, so we don't even take advantage of all the changes and the resources. Because if you really stop, like, damn, I'm living in the best time to do whatever I want to. Because I got more access than just about all of my ancestors had at any point in time. Information, media, money, people. Like, if I really sit down and you got ideas, you can do whatever you want to. <laughs> but it's more so just a lack of good ideas and execution that people had. It ain't a lack of resources. That's why, you know, what we do with the, the financial literacy, I call it the financial liberation movement, you know, by teaching people financial literacy and educating them, now you give them the options to change their life in a different direction. Because a lot of people just be stuck, don't know where to go. So it's like, all right, number one, let me even tell you how to deal with yourself. Because before I'm going to teach you how to deal with money, I'm going to teach you how to deal with your mind. You understand me? Because that's where all your issues from money come from. You don't know how to stop spending. You got insecurities. You don't love yourself. You understand me? You, you do all of these different things. And then if I can help build that and help you get to know yourself, you stop spending because of your insecurities or your issues. Now, I actually can save. I can fast from things. I can stop when I want to do something. But most people ain't got control over themselves. If I ask the average person right now, stop smoking, stop drinking tomorrow, they gonna say, I can do that. But if they try to, they be back smoking and drinking tomorrow. So who has control over you if you don't have control over yourself? You understand me? And so it's really getting people to see themselves and giving them tools to be able to stop fast, which detox from all of that shit that you got going on in your life, and then you start correcting yourself from there. And I ain't saying do that shit overnight, but I'm saying that specifically for men, when I be talking like this, it's like, it ain't about it being easy. It's about you going and doing the hard thing, because that's what's gonna make you a man. You understand me? If you really grade yourself by them details and you consider yourself to be a man, you have to stop, oh, well, that's not easy. He acting like it was just, no, he acting like that. I'm saying that you a man, drop your nuts and get it done. If not, then be happy with the consistent life of a sucker. But I think that, you know, we got that ability. Sometimes we just need somebody to talk to us. Yeah. You feel me? And we under mother, under father, under brother, under sister. We ain't really got that family energy no more. You feel me? And that family energy, we got principle, we got value. Everybody live by this. This the code of the family. Ain't no codes, no structure. So everybody just trying to figure out life as they go and they just fell in everywhere. You feel me? Yeah, families don't work together like they used to, uh, you know, just, you know, for a lot of reasons. Nah, and I love you my family. ain't got family. stable. But that's the thing about it. It never got bad. It's, it's just like it's been. It's been the same story for the whole time. We always, <clears throat> family actually was solid. Like, during the whole time of slavery, family stuck together still. You understand me? It really didn't get go? up all the way to the point of welfare go? state and the government started breaking up men and women and families started dispersing, which means that we went through that whole entire time of slavery, eons of history, and it didn't get to government programs of welfare that started to break up black men and women. So when we, when we really simply look at it, it ain't that hard to fix it. Black men got to get money again, you feel me, and then start doing the right thing with it. But we just can't, for the most part, can't be dependent on. 
Like, so a woman becomes independent when a man can't be dependent on. That's just a simple formula. You understand me? And now, they can't go together. She can't depend on you. You understand me? Because you're not dependable, and she's independent, so she depends on no one. So who's she going to at the end of the night? So it's just switching those dynamics, and you know, that's the conversation I like to have with the culture. The plot twist is, she going home, she got a nigga, they meeting over there. She independent, not by herself. Independent don't mean single. No, that's a fact. Hey, Amen. We'll be single at some point in time. That shit don't never last. I long. learned this about women. If you don't physically say the words that, like, y'all together, like, boy, like, I'm your yeah. boyfriend, we are this, we are in a... Re if you don't say that verbally... Then you can get away with not treating Then y'all are not together in their mind, so... No, it's a verbal I think contract. women still believe yeah. it, even though you don't say it, because when you act it. Because nowadays, men will act a part as the boyfriend, the husband, all of that. And a oh, woman going to make an assumption. It's what we is. So her feelings going to be caught up in it as it's if only the in assumption. a way that she assumed. It's only the assumption until she get it. Like, if you get caught, then she going to say, oh, I thought we were together. But if you catch her doing some dumb shit, it's gonna be <laughs> That's a we fact. were never together. Oh yeah, they That's do. That's insurance. And then on the flip side, shit, as a dude, you gonna say the same thing. Like I never said we was together. Yeah. But that just you know makes me? you sound like more of a terrible man. But as a woman, her, and fact. she says it. But it's the same thing. It's like, oh, well, you were leading yourself on because I never agreed to these terms. Mm, she gonna say it just like that, too. They cold with it like <laughs> that. Smooth and calm. You think you could just approach them <laughs> using logical sense and... and Hell no. Nah. No. Women ain't based on logic. I never do that. Uh-uh. And, you know, and, and, and I ain't gonna say women, I say the feminine energy ain't based on logic. Right. You understand me? Which is completely different. Right. So when you try to approach anything with a woman just based on rational, and logical thought you're gonna lose every time. Even if you're right in the argument, if you're going straight with logic, you're gonna lose. Right. You gotta go with feeling. That's right. You, you gotta so look go with win. your feeling. You can't be like, this is what you did. Right. You gotta say, this is how I felt about it, mm -hmm. about what you did. It don't matter. You, got to you gotta speak about your feelings. <laughs> they don't care about how nothing made you feel, man. It's about how they it's feel. Over. And what you did. You ain't supposed to have no feelings. Right. That's how Cause anytime you, you catch her doing some shit, she'd be like, boy, please, after all the shit you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold world, man. I think all men should just stop trying to figure women out completely. Fuck it. Just gonna deal with them when they feel like dealing with us, and we just gonna leave that shit secret like it's been. We need to really stop I wasting time to trying to figure women. out women. It's what? Not. The figuring out you is wrong. You peace. can understand your woman, but you all women, peace. hell no. I think feminine <clears throat> energy, masculine energy, for the most part, we do the same shit over and over. People ain't that complicated. We like to think shit complicated, but we don't like to accept what we already know as men. But trying to figure it out detail by detail, you're going to lose every time. Right. You just got to understand this is feminine energy. This is how I move. You understand me? I'm masculine. This is how I think. You feel me? And then when you put them two together, it ain't really much to figure out. You just gotta act accordingly. Hey man, just leave them ladies alone. Deal with your woman. That's the best oh, advice no, I can give you. Yeah. Don't try to figure women out. It's too much. It's too much shit in the game when it comes to that. Yeah, but I also think that's probably one of our biggest issues. Like, men don't understand themselves. <laughs> women don't understand themselves. I understand me. I got a cool, it take a long time though. Like, the older you get, the more you learn about yourself and what triggers you and what you don't want and the people you like and you know, when it's time to get out of there. Mm -hmm. It just take a long ass time to come up with a complete list of who you are as a man. And just, you know, you get to a certain age where you start to know yourself better. Right, and I think as black men, we think that, you know, we have the luxury of you know, pick that shit, that ain't me. Uh, like, there are certain parts of life that you can't skip. Certain things have to happen in your journey into manhood. 
Like, you ain't gonna be a complete man until you done got your heart broke or some shit like that, or really been in a real relationship, and then you can go back and reflect and see where you were wrong, what you could have did better. But then it's like where you weren't wrong, things that you can, decisions that you make that you can live with. That's the biggest part about being a man. However yeah. people look at your decisions, I if you can like, be comfortable with them and face the consequences that come with them, that's, that's what being a man is. Probably not to around 35, like a man stops thinking selfishly for the most part. Right. You understand me? So like relationships before that almost doomed to fail sometimes. Um, just because you don't really know how to stop not just thinking about yourself and start thinking about the other person empathetically. Men don't know how feelings work until you get your fucking feelings hurt. <laughs> Put that on the shirt, nigga. That's you don't fact. even know that shit. You don't even know what the fuck that shit feel like to somebody do, your, somebody do a you on you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We ain't got a lot of emotional experience, though. Like, when we young, we just, we skip over feelings. We don't have them. That's what I'm saying. We we do, like that's our de uh, developmental de delay. No, you have them. Definitely. You don't act. You don't use them though. You have them. Then somebody ignore them. Some bullshit them. happen, and then you ice cold. You 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 I hey hey this one girl did. Hey, I'm finna. I'm hard on these hoes. I'm iceberg slim out here. No, you. Hey. I mean, should I want to talk to tap into my feelings? You understand me? It was, yeah. I was taught, you know, rise above emotions. But once you get to understanding it, because you ain't going to really be able to appreciate and understand women until you tap into that side of yourself as well. Yeah, don't rise above it. That's the thing about it, though. Once you understand that those feelings are there, you got to walk straight through that shit. That's the only way it's going to work. That's what I'm saying. You can't cut the corner. Some things in life you just got to do. Now, I believe in rising above it just in the fact that your emotions don't rule you. You understand them. Yeah. Some of that shit you got. But, like, the consequences of those emotions. You just have oh, to yeah. face that shit. That's a fact. Like, you got to feel yourself rather than try to suppress it. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's where you get a lot of, you know, I hate that word, but toxic behavior. You understand me? Where it's like, damn, I don't really know how I'm feeling. I'm going to skip that. And then you just start acting out. Yeah. You understand me? No, nah, I'm going to take full inventory of who I am what I feel, because I ain't going to be afraid of no emotion that come up. Yeah, it ain't going to control me. It ain't going to yeah. rule me. You understand me? But I'm going to feel it, because if I don't, then that's saying I'm afraid of myself. Anything you suppress is going to come up eventually. Did this you shit just, just turn into black man up. therapy or something? Yeah, shit? man. Hey. Some real mental health talk. Hey. Oh. I mean, you know, me and my bros, we were talking about that earlier. It's like... Mental health? Just the idea that men never, uh, uh, when you're younger, you don't have conversations around how you feel. You understand me? And how you yeah, perceive yourself. Yeah, because you don't hear that whole ass shit. Exactly. Bro. That's the whole, that's where to go to. But at the same time, it's one of the most masculine things because that's a man <clears> logically <throat> dealing with shit. You understand me? Right. It's like, it's easy to go fight somebody, but to have conflict resolution and communicate, that's masculine. The feminine is the latter, not dealing with it. Mm. You understand me? So we ain't was never taught that, yo, we sit down as a council of men and we actually talk about things, that's masculine as hell. Yeah, we Not usually do that after shit, the fact. Right. Yeah. yeah, it usually happens too late. That's why when you see grown men talk, especially in older age, they able to sit down, they able to articulate, they can break things down, they can talk about all manners of things and, and, and get through it. But when you're young, if you ain't got a father in your life that can really train you through that, you ain't gonna never pick it up. And my brother and father, they're the most masculine men I ever known, so they definitely didn't talk about it. So I imitated them, so it took me years to understand that I ever even had a feminine side. You understand me? And what that actually meant, and that didn't pertain to women, it just pertained to balance of energy within myself, yeah. which was a completely different conversation. Mm. Then once you're able to balance that out, then you really got all the power you want to as a man. You understand me? And that's why I draw creatively from, that's where I draw my leadership from. That's where I draw my intellect. I'm able to pull from both sides and understand myself. And I just don't lie to myself. If I'm fucked up in the area, then I'm gonna look in the mirror and I'm gonna own that until I can control it and let it go. You understand me? I'm not going, nah, that ain't me. Nah, I'd rather see myself for who I am so I can change into the person that I feel like I should be. A change is always necessary. Always. Good growth. Evolution. Part of the evolution. Yeah. yeah. So what's y'all next phase in life? Like, do you ever you ever think about like, all right, 
I think about my future self, right? So like in 10 years, what I'm gonna be wearing, the way I'm gonna feel, the way I'm gonna dress, I'm gonna be on a whole nother level. You understand me? So do you ever stop and have that vision on where you think about your future? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna still be me. A little bit fatter. I'm gonna be on a boat. Ooh. Just out in the middle of the Mediterranean, man. Yeah. Chilling. Watching the sunset. Is the you own the boat? My shit. Okay. We've been out here for weeks. Yeah. Just chilling. What about you? I done made a billion dollars off imagination. I'm gonna be the nigga bring imagination back. <laughs> Bringing it back. Hell yeah. 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 Uh, all my career was gonna have the infinity pool, and I'm gonna be the director of about two movies. Two movies. Yeah. I got a role. Yeah, you in there? Yeah, we're doing big shit. We're creating more media, movies, films. Yeah. Probably by the time they get to Jurassic Park 15. Me and Clayton be done wrote one of them shit. Some big, a smash. Yeah. It's gonna be one of them ones where you ain't even know it was us. You feel me? Probably do a few things with Jordan Poole or some shit. Do a kind of 10 or something. Mm, come on, man. Hey, we gonna have to get us another superhero. So we gonna hold all the right. Yeah, working with three, four different networks. I feel it. Do you, so how y'all running everything right now? So are y'all producing movies? Yeah. Bollywood movies. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, they got man. a song up over there. They ain't Big let nobody in there this year. I mean, we ain't, but we speaking up on it, bro. Now, we might be able to do something in Nollywood. Yeah, Nollywood. Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. No, for sure, Nigeria. Spike got a problem. Shit, we got to go to Uganda. They got, they, they just got 13 trillion, whatever. Uganda, Nigeria, Rwanda, those are all the best spots. Yeah. We'll plug in over there. Need to. Two American got a large African audience. Need the app. They rock with us. Yeah, they, I mean, I don't know exactly, like, like if I could give you a count, but. Nah, but they pop up. They put their flags up. They shout yeah, out their yeah. city. They, they tell us. They put the flag up like we know what country they They is. come on the live. Yeah. Oh, they just tell us. <laughs> hey, Los, I see you representing. The, what? They assume you know what that means. That's why. Tell me. Right. They, or they abbreviated. That shit is even the worst. Just tell me exactly so I can Google it. But we popping everywhere. All up in Gabon, Russia, <laughs> the Ukraine. Mm. I don't know about the Ukraine. I don't think I'll, Crimea. I don't think we in Russia, bro. Uh, bro, my fucker just sent me on Instagram the uh, other day watching this shit from Russia. I thought they pulled the internet. Crimea. He got bootleg. Australia. New Guinea. Nigga had showed me the shit. They watching this shit up in the mountains with the uh, with the native mountain village yeah. people. You think I'm bullshitting? Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it, man. I want to see it. I ain't, I ain't had your social media. The next time my fans hit me up from around the world, I'll start sending it all to you. Yeah, so just you can send it to me. I'm going to start reposting it. Yeah. Yeah. This lady was having a baby. Guess what she it. was watching? 85 South Show. Okay. That's more On big. a military base in France somewhere, I think. Yeah. Laughter probably good for the pain. Yeah. We done hit all corners of the earth. Yeah. Name a place. Ireland. They fuck with us heavy over there. Heavy. White girl with the big titties from Ireland said she wanted me to come over there and eat some boiled ham with her. I was like, what the fuck is boiled Don't ham? Do it. How could I make that up? <laughs> Look it up. That's what they eat over there, boiled ham. It's soft, mushy shit. I got fans over there in Ireland and Scotland. When we was out in London, they drove like 450 miles to pull up on us. Wow. Yeah. See? Yeah. I do this process. It was this white guy. They wanted me to crown him. I put like the crown on your head, but I told him I'm a crown white folks. They were still happy. You told him that? Absolutely. How did you say it? I don't crown white folks. You called them white folks? People, folks. I might have interchanged those, but. What was the look on their face like? Oh. <laughs> I mean, but you feel me? I'm gonna always keep it real with him. <laughs> Bruh asked me, he said, You know they found a the nigga that did it anyway, right? No, they, they was cool with it. Like, they, they followed the platform, they know, so like, they know my We got the other guy. Already. You still got the other guy's number? He did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nobody can do it but me. You feel me? But no, nah, he asked me, he said so, and he said it in his accent. But he was like, man, I, I really follow you, man. I need you to help me get my power. You understand me? I said, nah, I can't help you with no white power. 
understand me? I can't be responsible for that. <laughs> and he respected it. Damn. <clears throat> But I still gave him some you solid advice. You didn't made this man a super life. villain. You didn't I made still, <laughs> No, I still gave him some solid advice on his life. You feel me? And, and I think the, the energy Jordan. I gave him Klu changed Klu his Klu life. Klu after that. <laughs> <laughs> Big Swans to go in his bag. He wouldn't give you the black part, but the white part has always been in you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my responsibility. That's fun. Oh yeah, man, whatever we want to talk about. I mean, the crown that you know, I was originally inspired by the honorable Elijah Muhammad, you understand me? And uh, I wanted to merge like higher consciousness with the streets. So originally I had it on bandanas. This was a more advanced one right here that you see. But normally we had a bandanas and I used to go around the world and I crown people all around the world. You understand me in the streets, Africa, everywhere we went. And it was just a process where, you know, kind of, giving them affirmation as I'm doing it, you know, some good energy. And people would make that, it became like a pilgrimage. People would come all over and they wanted to get crowned. You understand me? And I wanted something that, like, if you look at the Paisley print of the bandana, that represented gang culture. Like, if you look at colors, it helped people spread gang culture, right? Oh, man, I put on this, I'm gang. So I'm like, damn, what do we have as an opposite effect that represent, like, you a god? Something that you tapping into your higher self. So I, I make sure that we always got them tied up in the back, just so it's always that connection, you understand me, to the streets. And now when I see people and they wear it, and sometimes they meet with each other, and we call it Crown Society, where it's just those around the world who crown themselves in representation of knowing who you are, what you stand for, what you believe, you feel me? And it's solid, because when people meet, they got the crown on, they know that they tapped into similar frequencies, you feel me? And so we build like that, because I wanted to create something that even when I'm going down somewhere and I see somebody with the crown on, that's my folks. You feel me? We all tapped into that same energy. When we talk about we, those my we. You understand me? I can't, I can't deal with everybody, but those my we, those who tapped in, right? And so I always did, uh, you know, fashion and just knew how to design things with creativity. And Dapper Dan just followed me, so, you know, I'm officially a fashion icon that's in that up. area. You man, know, that don't mean that, shit. That does mean something. He only follow 185 <laughs> people. You feel me? And I'm nah, one of them. You I'm can't take shit. that. You can't take that away. You can't take that away. I mean, no, ask, no, ask no. that for them. Oh, ask, oh, ask oh, let me follow this brother. Man. Ask them, man. Real sharp eye for the fabric. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? That's a no, yeah, so look. Me, no. yeah. This, this will happen for Gucci real. Gucci and Versace coming right now. No, this will happen for real. He was doing a collaboration, right, with Gap. And he sold out like maybe I think 10,000 hoodies. So I put out a video giving an idea on how this would have went better if you made it an NFT, because you would have got royalties on it if you would put it out there, right? Everybody tagging, blase, blase. Some people like, man, damn, I don't need your help, right? A week later, that's exactly what they do. Then a week later after that, Dan followed me, tapped in, put the stamp on. He could have followed you the week before and let him know he was going to do your idea, whatever. No, nah, they could have. I ain't getting no money off of it, but I'm going to use it stop for cloud free right. game. No, nah, I ain't going to stop that. OK. I don't feel like nobody owes me nothing, but that don't mean I can't press play and say that that's something I did. But you real believe that Dapper Dan following you makes you a fashion icon? Nah, that's just, that's just him weighing his opinion on it, that's all. You feel me? You ain't a fashion icon, dude. No, I definitely am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, dog. You know we're going to talk to you. Keep doing there. your thing, bro. I'm up there. You feel Hell me? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like even with the NFTs and stuff, uh, it, it, it's really not even just NFTs. It's just the whole blockchain some? and Web3. Yeah, I bought some. I made some money off some. I sold a lot as well. You understand? Made some. Yeah. yeah, I sell ones like I got the crowns. They spin everybody who buy these. They unlock a physical crown. Mm. They are part of the crown society. Like it also can double as like a membership to an event or something or a discount or special merch. Yeah. So now I know how many people that's in that community that really lock rock with me. Like if 85 South Show got their own NFT, right? The 85ers, right? You know exactly how many people in there, how many people spinning, where they at in the world. They all in the community. They speaking with each other in the Discord and everything. That's building out y'all whole business foundation. Them people are locked in with each other on the grid. You understand me? You go in that room, yo, we about to be in Chicago. It's already 30,000 people in the Chicago room. You drop the ticket link in there, it's sold. You ain't never gotta post it on Instagram. Cause you got the community in a central place where you can communicate with them. 
If you go on Instagram, you drop a post, maybe three to four percent of people will go tap in. So you gotta send it through email, you gotta try to hit them through text, you gotta consistently try to put it out there so enough people see it, they click the link and buy. But the idea of Web3 is that, nah, we're not asking Instagram to be the middleman. We wanna be able to own that audience and own that digital identity that's on there. You understand me? And put the internet on the blockchain so we don't have to go through nobody else for our own influence. Like, it's crazy when you really think about it. Instagram, like, everybody creates content for Instagram, and Instagram keeps 100% of the proceeds. You understand me? The idea of Web3 is that, no, when you make your own content, you get to sell it and you get to get paid, right? If somebody wants to throw an ad on there, then that means that you now getting paid for that. If somebody's sharing your content, and let's say, like, if I got something viral and everybody use it as a reel for their voice, right now they getting paid for that. But let's say a million people didn't utilize my reel, my IP, but I don't get paid because I dropped it on the platform and I don't own it. So the idea of Web3 is that, nah, everything you make, everything you create, you own it. So when it gets monetized, you get paid. So like I start talking about NFTs because I just figured it was a, be a good way that people can <coughs> increase their business models and create communities out of it. It had nothing to do with no eight pictures, none of that shit. It's about the technology itself and what do it do? You feel me? Yeah. And so like the whole Web3 space, I feel like that's a space that if black people really educate themselves on, you got the opportunity to create billionaires and multimillionaires now. Like if your children is interested in gaming, they can, you know, sit down and actually learn how to create their own game. And it ain't even that hard. But it's like, we just gotta know, like I said, we go back to intelligence, making decisions in the right direction. Like, most people don't know what their child's job in the future will be. 60 to 80% of the jobs ain't even been created. Right. They're gonna have to be created out their imagination. But for the most part, it's like when you look at where the future going, the Asian, so I studied this when we talk about wealth standards. Like, if you look at the Asian wealth standard, one of theirs is utilize education, family, right? And they always go to the top sectors. And they jump in those top sectors the highest paid sectors, and that's where they get their education in. And whatever's coming next. So if blockchain go be in it, guess what? All our children jumping into blockchain. So when blockchain pop up, guess what? Who get paid? We do. Guess what? Who we selling that to? Your children, right? right? And then the cycle continues to go. And that's how they able to consistently grow and build and build. And that's why China number one in the world now. Mm. Well, there you have it, folks. Yeah. It's all the game. Put that shit together. Black people coming, though. Don't worry. No, no we definitely. are. We on our definitely. way. We taking our, I mean, listen, we had a lot of ills that we took along the way getting here. So it's like we talk about all of this black people stuff, but at the end of the day, like, we've been through a lot before this moment. You yeah, it's all me? good, though. We coming hard. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 we got good people like myself and yourself and other people that's going to consistently put out things that's gonna help people make better decisions. Hell yeah, I'll drop your that. social media so they can catch up with you. And... Oh man, they can find me at 19 underscore keys. On 19 all underscore. That's on IG, on YouTube. You plug in 19 keys or go to high level conversations. We lock in there where, you know, we talk about health, we talk about wealth. Aliens and shit. Mindset. Sometimes we, we'll drop some of that in there. We keep it entertaining for the yeah, people. Yeah, I had to go back time. and catch it. I had to re-listen. That one just dropped, well, actually <clears> that one, that's probably our best episode. We only. For that particular podcast, we've been out like 60 days. You understand me? But all the episodes hit past six figures to seven figures on those. So we killing the game. Keep doing you your motherfucking me? thing, man. I know this is your first time in the trap. Don't let it be your last yeah, time. Oh, yeah, man, man, this was fun, man. This was fam. different for me. Yeah, yeah. You we glad me? you come kick it. Yeah. Just open discussion, talk about whatever we want to. That's yeah. how it's supposed to be. What you say, Cat? That's the one with Billy Carson, man. We went deep. That one just hit two million a day, man. People loving that. That's a cool yeah. classic. Yeah. I mean, the, one of the ideas we talked about that, you know, we are the aliens. You understand me? Like, black folks, if there was going to be some aliens, when I think about it, I don't think about little green men or little gray men. I think about black people up there piloting ships. You feel me? And it was something that was done on the Science Channel where they basically did a study where if it was going to be aliens and we was to live out in space, those who got darker skin can actually deal with the radiation more. You understand me? So aliens would have to be dark skin. They had to be heavy, melanated. Then with there being no gravity, 
the way you go come out the uterus, your head go be bigger, cause it's not gonna squeeze. Then you gonna be less dense, cause there's no gravity, so you gonna be skinny. So it's gonna be skinny black people with big heads in space. So if I'm thinking about UFOs, I'm thinking it's skinny black people with big heads up there piloting, pulling down, coming to see what we talking about. But then they, when they come down here, they say they was great. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? It wasn't great. They came you say they were black. It could have been a space suit. I don't know. I don't claim to be an alien expert, but yeah. I just think that I don't think of it in the terms of like some reptilian aliens. I think in the terms like these are just people with advanced technology. They probably look just like niggas. They just got some little gills up behind their ears. And they ain't got no reason to come visit. Yeah, it's probably humans that weren't born on Earth. Uh, from slave ship to mothership. That concept more so is talking about, you know, we start off on a slave ship where we don't own nothing and we own by everything. You understand me? When we talk about we don't own nothing, that slave ship, that's our bills, credit, that's the systems, the institutions, everything in America. And then the next stage of that, once you get educated, you go towards ownership. You understand me? You want to stop renting, you want to get you a house. But it also goes towards emotional ownership where you take accountability and ownership over all things in your life. So you start to mature from slave ship to ownership. You, then when you really get advanced, you go from owning that emotion to controlling it. Like it ain't even mine no more, but I have control over it. You understand me? I rule it and that's rulership. And then it's like, it's, I don't even own these assets, but I control them. So you own nothing, but you control everything. So therefore you move on into rulership. And then that final frontier is like with black people, we get, enlightenment and consciousness where we ain't worried about money, we ain't worried about none of those things. We get to literally just play in our imagination. And that's where we live above things and we on that mothership. So that concept is something I utilize to teach us to kind of like put a vision in where we need to go. Because some people on the mother, on the slave ship. Some people on ownership, some people on rulership. But you gotta make it all the way to the mothership if you wanna get out of here. Oh, big facts, 19 keys, man. Clay Nigga. Yeah. J O N. Yes, sir. 85 yeah. South Show. We out this beat. Let's take a picture. Let's do it. Oh, oh, man. Oh, shit. Let's take a picture.